Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, this time episode 44. Last episode was a really good one. We had Marco defeating Envy with the surprise clutch. Really good for Marco, honestly. I really like him as a character. I think he's come a long way as a character from kind of doing the whole running away thing to finally taking a stand and fighting against the things that he helped create. He's sort of acknowledging and owning up to a lot of stuff, which is really, really great to see. We also saw that Olivier was shown this sort of like fake army sort of thing that the government is making. We don't really know exactly what's going on with that, but I can only assume that Father is trying to maybe transmute souls into different like puppet bodies so that way he has control over them, maybe through his alchemy or something. I don't know. I'm sure we're going to get probably much more of that into this episode because uh, that's just, I don't know, that's just what I'm expecting. And then we left off with Winry and Alphonse meeting up with Hohenheim and Rose over in Lior. I really like how Rose is coming back into the story some, as well as like, obviously I'm really enjoying the time we've got to spend with Hohenheim because he's kind of shifted so dramatically throughout the series from this like, mysterious, potentially evil mastermind character, which I don't know if I ever really bought that, but uh, he's definitely shifted tones from like, that sort of guy into a much more interesting wholesome family man with like a troubled past i don't know hohenheim is a very very interesting character he i think he's like shifting up from like one of the like mid-tier characters which i kind of cared about into one of my favorites he's actually like up there right now with like scar and alphonse are probably some of my other favorites but then again it's just so hard to pick favorites in the show when everybody is just so important so crucial so well developed and all for like so much different reasons we've got like badasses like Roy and Scar but then we also have real sweethearts like Winry and Al and then there's people like uh the most important character in the entire series we have Barry the Chopper you know pretty much the fundamental backbone of the entire story without him we would have never we would have never gone anywhere so it's really hard to pick my favorite but uh Hohenheim is definitely moving up for sure I'm ready to get straight into it. If you want to check out the next episodes right now, they are on my Patreon, of course. Episode 45 is on the Soul tier. Episodes past that are on the Ascended tier. And those episodes are also extended length, meaning that you get a lot more reaction and more discussion with every episode. You know how it goes by now. You can also follow me on my socials, my Twitter, Instagram, my Twitch, anything really. All the links are in the description. Of course, it would mean a lot to me if you took the time to follow me on at least one of those. Let's check out episode 44. I just realized, is that the anti-transmutation circle or whatever that Marco was talking about? I only saw the design once, but that doesn't look like the standard. And plus they don't need to draw transmutation circles anyway, so I think that might be what that is. Episode 44, revving at full throttle. No idea what that's supposed to mean, but we'll see. Yeah. So, uh, oh yeah, here we go. I saw Panaco recently. She told me about your body. How is Al gonna feel about him? Silence. I feel like Al is... He's a sweet kid. He might... Hey, there he is. He'll understand if you explain it to Mr. him, maybe. Ho, you think you could give us a hand for a bit? Yeah, sure. Mr. Ho. Let's catch up later. Oh, okay. He's not so standoffish as Ed might be, initially. He's gonna feel conflicted, though, of course. You did a hell of a job fixing up this old radio. It works better than it used to. It doesn't even pick up static now. Oh yeah, in episode three when they broke it. I'm really sorry. All this bad stuff happened because we stuck our noses in. Mm, don't say that. You've got to look at all the good stuff that's come from it. You yeah, absolutely. To corrupt fraud. People reacted badly at first, but take a look. You know, learn and rebuild. That's all you can do. Sounds good, huh? Bringing people together. It's working together to rebuild what we lost. Exactly. And you guys are the ones that brought us together. Exactly. I'm gonna help build. Rose, can you take care of Winry? Yeah, an alchemist would be insanely oh, useful in construction. Too. You heard him, Yoki. Who's that in the back? Huh? Oh, Yoki. <laughs> Your food will taste better once you've worked up an appetite. Quit Poor Yoki, man. You just can't catch a break. I'm starting to feel bad for him. You mean that was your son back there? I'm sorry if we interrupted. It's been a while, right? Maybe you should head back and talk. I don't know. I left when he was just a boy. <laughs> I haven't seen him since. I doubt that he thinks of me as his father or I think me. I'm not even sure what to say to him. Alphonse seeing him working like this will really help a lot. Seeing him do good actions. I, um, he called I him dad too. too. 
Here, let me carry those. <sighs> Alphonse is just too sweet for his own good. Here you go. It's it's actually unnatural how sweet Alphonse is. <laughs> he told me to stand on my own two feet. He said that? He can be a jerk sometimes. Nah, but that's exactly what she needed to hear. For him to be nice. She was she was head over heels in the in the brainwash. But you already know that, don't you? It was more in the desperation than the brainwash. She was super looking for somebody to help her back then. Mine and the whole town's. For sure. We're learning to stand on our own. I really like that. Any kind of miracle to do it. That whole background with Rose. All thanks to Ed and Al. I appreciate it more now that we know Ed and Al better. Especially Ed. I liked it in episode three, but wasn't such a bright idea the impact just continues to grow. I have no idea where the hell I am. Where are you, Mr. Greed? I, I talked so much crap on this guy when we first met him, but he's... I don't know, man. The fact that he's the one that lived. I like it. Oh, and he's finding this now. Watch, watch this lizard man be really impactful to the story. He's gonna clutch really hard somehow. They're like humanoid receptacles, powerful dummies that we can bond souls to. Exactly. Not only are they immortal, they're mindlessly obedient. They are the world's most perfect soldier. Mind if I ask you a question, sir? Go right She's ahead. gonna hate that. You mentioned that souls would be bonded to them. Where do you plan on procuring these souls? There's From that, of course. Lands, of course. Citizens from the countries we ravaged during the course of war. For one reason or another, the battlefield serves as a hunting ground for the collection of souls. You just gotta love how Lizard Man is in the right place at the right time to hear that. That's pretty critical information that they probably don't want to get out. But then again, I don't know what anybody can do to stop it. Just maybe destroy all the dummies before they get souls put into them because after the souls get put into them, it might be too late. But I was also thinking how much Olivier would hate this sort of thing, especially with how much importance she places in loyalty. And it's not just like a, I'm not sure how to better describe it as, it's not like a loyalty that's there innately, it's an earned loyalty. As much as a hard ass she is, she earns loyalty because she's reliable, she's a strong leader. She would like almost definitely look down upon somebody that would use something like this for the simple fact that you didn't earn the loyalty. If you're actually a strong, competent, uh, dependable person, a good leader, you wouldn't need to engineer perfect soldiers. You would almost make them yourself, would you not? I guess the whole immortal thing is probably pretty good, but it's obviously just begging to be abused, which, which you know, obviously because father wants to be able to do whatever he wants with it, uh, which is just part of father's goals, which we don't really know yet. I keep theorizing about what father could potentially want. I don't think it's something like world domination because I think honestly, if you wanted to go for world domination, it probably wouldn't be too hard. I think father is after something a lot more personal and I'm not exactly sure what. I've made some theorizations that maybe he's not like truly immortal or that he's not truly all powerful. We know he's very powerful, obviously with his alchemy and all of that, but he's definitely bound by some like almost humanistic things, you know, like all of his emotions, for instance. The fact that he expels his emotions into homunculus almost makes me think that father doesn't want them to be part of him. I don't know. That That's just, that might, might be shooting in the dark a little bit, but he, I think he's after something a lot more personal. I also just want to toss in here before we get back to it that I really enjoyed Hohenheim and Alphonse's little talks. It's really sweet. It's definitely a, a pretty big tone change to when uh, Hohenheim and Edward met in episode like 20 or whatever it was. Obviously, Ed was a lot more standoffish, but I think Hohenheim was too at that point. So it's really nice to see them like making an effort to get along. I don't know if Alphonse would have reacted the same way if this would have, if this like reunion would have happened earlier in the series. He's come a long way and I think he's really changing for the better. Uh, somehow, somehow Al is getting sweeter as the episodes go by, which is, I don't know how that's even possible, but, but it's happening. And the Rose and Winry stuff is really nice too. Yes, he would. 
This is a, a different greed. I wonder if he's gonna recognize him. Uh-huh. And I've got a hunch that it runs under Lior. If it does, well no, I'm positive it does. Hold on now. Let's find some place more private. Yeah, for sure. I mean he knows this already, but So I was kind of shocked to find you here, Dad. I must have some good luck after all. <laughs> we encountered a man who was identical to you in Central. I don't know how you're connected to him, but I'm guessing you at least know who he is, right? Mm hmm. Are He's... you sure you want to know, Al? <laughs> Please fill him in. Cross your mind, I might be on their side. You've given Stop away it. your entire plan. Aren't you the least bit worried I might leak it to them? <laughs> he has hope, he has faith. It's weird because we obviously know this isn't it. I'm glad that you feel like you can still trust me. Thanks, Alphonse. Uh, sure. <laughs> Poor Al, you're testing him a little too much. This boy still sees me as his father and actually trusts me. Yeah. Now then, I suppose I owe my sons the same trust they've given me. Absolutely. I think Alphonse gets it from him too. To explain, it would be for the best for Edward to hear it as well. Actually, about that I hate to say it but brother has gone missing right yeah he doesn't know where he's at he's fine you got a new job as a bank teller here that should cover your medical bill <laughs> well I could charge you more but this will do it better you're already ripping us off, Doc. How can you say that? It's reasonable when you consider the risks involved. Sure, and as long as you guarantee that you're going to keep your mouth shut... What are they going to do for him? Uh-oh. They're on to you. <laughs> I guess they found us. What kind of yes. medical treatment is he getting? Oh, you're soldiers. Do you need a physical? We're looking for someone. Is this man your only patient? There's no one else? There's one more resting. Rude. <laughs> Are you the only patient back here? Were you at the bank this He afternoon? just looks funny. He looks Don't funny move. under that sheet. Hold it. Do you work at this doctor's office? Slowly raise your hands above your head. Have you seen anyone unusual frequenting the clinic lately? He's described as... Right now! Show me your hands! A red coat, blonde hair worn in a braid, and mm. short. <laughs> Check it out! You messed up. Harris! Harris, what happened to you? Come on, snap to! Harris! Getting one tap by the metal, the metal arm. I wonder if he still has the uh, iron arm since he's up north. Cohen, or, Harris, it's not iron, on? right? It's Take a different alloy. I like how they made the arms seem so big in that shot. <laughs> Damn, Ed. <laughs> that was cool. You just had to take him out on your own, huh? Better than shooting him. Kid, you haven't even fully recovered yet. Don't treat me like I'm an invalid. My injuries are completely healed, and I'm revving at full throttle. Oh, damn. Oh, damn. <laughs> really? Oh, but damn. <laughs> damn, he's got the drip. You've done, Doc. Don't the toothpick it, makes all the difference. Someone with a red coat and a braid? Guess I'll have to make do with this look for a while. The red coat was pretty cool, though. Drop your weapons! We took too long. Get your hands up in the air. Do it now. Move it, kid. Those guys are dangerous. Stay back or he's dead. Don't force us to blow this kid. He'll right he'll get the finger gun. I like how Ed is so nonchalant about all of this. Well, I'll wire some wheels for us. Okay. He's just like, yeah, whatever. He's been through so much worse. When did this turn? <laughs> when did this turn into a car chase show? 
bit different than stuff before. I like this old school gangster flick vibe to it. Roads do not look safe to drive on. They must have turned on that street up there. Move it. They parked in the clown car. Is that like transmuted armor or something? And you doubted me. Yeah, well, can you change it back into a normal car now? And why is that? I think this car looks cool as hell. <laughs> Just change it back. Please, we're begging you. Didn't they flame you guys his Right, didn't they flame that before? Okay, he does though. His winter getup with his red like fur coat, that, that looked sick. That car was pretty bad though, I'll be honest. If I were Al, where would I go? Come on. You never know because of the information that he acquires when he's away, you know? Still awake? <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Wonder if he'll get it right. A lot. You were a slave and now you're a philosopher's stone? Yeah, right. Can't say I blame you if you don't believe me. Why would he not believe you? He is literally a suit of armor. Know how impossibly far fetched that it sounds. You'd have to be crazy to believe it. Well, Too elaborate to be made up. I guess I'm crazy then because I do believe you. Oh, do you really? That was fast. To be honest, it kind of scares me. And besides, my situation's kind of far-fetched, too. Exactly. So, what's I would be upset if... Able to die? Well, if somebody didn't believe his situation. You don't have to worry, Al. It's true that I have a Philosopher's Stone fused to my soul. But not even that can change the fact that I am a human being. Hmm, interesting. I look alike beneath Central. His body is like a leather bag that's patterned after mine. A leather bag? More or less. There's also some interesting destroy that leather bag. talks about Bradley with There's all that. What's inside. They're gonna do the same thing to Amestris that they did to Xerxes, aren't they? We've gotta hurry and stop them. It's almost complete. Oh, this is a power rest. team. You've really done your homework. This right, is that is it. Transmutation circle, huh? Destroying the tunnel seems like the best way to thwart them. And since it runs under Lior... That's not a good idea. <sighs> They've Please. got an immensely powerful homunculus named Pride watching over the tunnel. But still, we've got to try before it's too no, late. No, no. For all we know, they might have already completed the circle. Then why are you so relaxed? Because it's not yet time. Huh? How do you know? Look up, son. You're too busy looking down when you need to look up. Huh? If you want answers, that's where you'll find them. Up? The sky? Is that to be at a certain you mean the time? Sun God Lito? The, the year, man maybe? Central is waiting for the day of reckoning. <laughs> that was a lot of information. I really like that Hohenheim was talking about how he is still a human being, despite the fact that his soul is fused to a philosopher's stone. Because it really makes me think about Bradley and how Bradley talked about himself relating to humanity as well. Because if you'll recall, Bradley was saying that basically why would he ever want to be a human being? Why would he ever want to be considered one? And in a lot of ways, Bradley is just, I guess he's just like emotions of something that is fused to a philosopher's stone. But still, I mean, they could still be considered humans. I think Lust almost considered herself a human, just built a little bit differently, I guess. So you really do see some conflicting perspectives here. I don't really want to dive into it too deep right now because this is not a Bradley scene, but Bradley has so many like complex questions about him that he's arguably one of the most complex and confusing characters of the whole series so far to me because he has so many like conflicting things that he says. It almost like he contradicts himself in so many different ways how he doesn't want to be a human, but he wants to be a king. But yet he lives an existence where he doesn't really make choices. He just takes his orders from like a superior yet he was still proud of the fact that he got to choose his wife so there's so many like weird contradictions within him and i hope we can get even more clarification of him but i'm starting to worry because we already do know a lot so maybe i'm just missing something or maybe it'll be left up to an to our own interpretations
I'm not really sure what the day of reckoning is when it comes to father, but I can only assume it has something to do with the position of the sun or something like maybe there's going to be like some sort of eclipse or something like some sort of correct time of the year or condition or some sort of settings that matches with what father's looking for in order to set this off. I don't really know what it means, though. It has something to do with the sun god Leto. I, I really don't know. It would be just me shooting in the dark to theorize. And this time I don't feel like I have that much to go off of. So all we know is that it's not going to happen yet. At least Hohenheim has a very strong suspicion that it's not going to happen yet. Hopefully he explains a little bit more about that. Why is he doing this to me? Oh, what damn. Do to deserve it? No, don't hurt lizard guy. I just started to like him. And I guess greed doesn't remember because it's a different wow, greed. This is fun. Most people tend to curl up and cry. It's about time that someone actually fights back. I do appreciate the chance to kill my boredom. <laughs> That's pretty twisted. Shield? And your voice sounds like, what the hell? You. Yep. How dare you imitate Mr. Greed? Excuse me, I'm no imitation. My name is Greed. Avaricious. You got it. I want everything you could possibly think of. I want money and power and women. Sex, status, glory. You demand the finer things in life. <laughs> yeah, he knows you well. Can't. How could you be? All right. Who are you? It has that to be. scared me. That was you loud. Mr. Greed. But how can you look like someone else? I asked you who you are. Now tell me. It's me. I'm your friend, Vigo. You haven't been gone from Dublin long enough to forget! Oh, you're from Dublin? Oh, now it makes sense. You he doesn't- no, me. no he doesn't. Oh! Afraid not. You must have been buddies with the previous Greed. But I thought- Sorry, pal, but you and I have never even met. That's awful. Mr. Greed, I'm your friend. <laughs> It's nothing personal. <laughs> I'm just doing my job. I am sorry, honestly. Really? They saved him just to kill him like that. Is this Ling? Is this Ling or the previous Greed somehow? Something is fighting back. Resurfacing. What have you done, Greed? Are you determined to prove you're a monster? What kind of sick creature would kill his own friend? He wasn't my friend. The memories are coming back a little bit. Then why do you remember him? And are yeah. you going to try and tell me Beto was just making everything up? Those are the last Green's memories. They're not mine. Then why are you in so much pain? <sighs> Pull yourself together. This is really cool. They aren't mine. Father purified me and purged the old Greed's memories. Those Clearly memories not. aren't a part of me anymore. No, you're wrong, Greed. It's not that easy. They'll always be a part of you. You can't just erase them from your soul. They were the only part of you that you chose. Oh, ooh, I love that. Do you not hear their souls crying out? You abandoned them. Your real family. You threw them away like trash. Ooh, you turned your back on something you wanted. You don't deserve to call yourself free! Wow, what a line that is. Beautiful voice acting. That was awesome. Reddit. <laughs> Reddit. <laughs> I, th I think you'll enjoy this one. I was just a bit older than you are the first time I read it. It's about an adventurer who travels the world. You look pretty happy, Bradley. What is it? They're quite on edge. Who is it? It's Greed. And he wants answers. Damn. Okay. This is just going straight into it. All right. I got to say the way that episode ended was pretty crazy. Like 
Full Metal has some pretty crazy endings, but that one, damn. Like, I really, really want to watch the next episode pretty much right away. There's actually so much there that I'm still trying to process it and unpack the meaning with everything that was said, but I'll do my best here. Before I even saw the after credit scene, I was thinking that it was really interesting how uh, Ling was talking to Greed about how the chimeras were the only thing that he got to choose, and it just made me think about last episode, because I only... Unfortunately, I only watched the last episode just like two or three days ago, and uh, he was talking about, Bradley was talking about how his wife was the only thing that he got to choose. And I thought that was like an interesting parallel. I didn't draw too much from it, or at least I didn't have the direct connection. But then Greed in the after credits goes straight to Bradley. So it's like, what is this going to mean? You know, how is this going to play out? Are we going to get even more interesting dialogue between the two? And it's especially important because Bradley was the one that basically defeated the, the Greed before Ling. I've talked about it plenty before, especially when Ling and Greed were a little bit more prominent in the story. They've definitely taken a backseat in the whole thing uh, ever since, I guess, they got fused together, but obviously they have a lot of similarities, but I, it's really kind of interesting thinking about Ling Yao and Bradley's similarities, how Bradley is this like king who has so, so, so much, and Ling Yao is this wannabe king, I guess you could call him. He's a wannabe emperor. They have such a different view on like leadership roles, on humanity, on like what a king's duty to his people are. And we definitely talked uh, a lot about that back when they did their initial face off. And now we're probably going to have that dialogue again, reinforced with what greed adds to the picture. It's going to be really interesting. I think there's going to be a lot of very good dialogue between the two characters next episode. And as good as this show is, I'm so sick of them doing some of these characters so dirty. What did Beto do to deserve that? I thought he was over here, he was spying on like Olivier, well accidentally and all that, but he was going to be like some uh, messenger, he was going to be a, you know, deliver this information to the outside world, to our main cast. I thought he was going to play an important role and have this sort of redemption, kind of like the other Chimeras, maybe he would join up with them. Nope, he just gets killed by his former friend, which is horribly, horribly sad. And I felt obviously shocked when it happened, but after the shock subdued a little bit, I felt really sad for him because honestly, he didn't deserve that. As we know, I said none of the chimeras back in episode 13 deserved to die, but they died anyway. Or I guess it was episode 14. What, whatever. Poor Beto, rest in peace. F's in the chat, of course. Also, a shout out to some very excellent voice acting at the end, especially by Ling Yao and uh, Todd Habercorn. Very, very excellent voice actor. I really liked him in Soul Eater with him playing Death the Kid and all that. And as many of you, I'm sure, know by now, Soul Eater is a series that is very near and dear to my heart. So uh, it's really nice to hear his voice acting again because I missed it. It's been a while. I am personally really looking forward to seeing where Greed goes in all of this. We always knew Greed was a bit of a wild card. We were introduced to the original Greed even before Ling Yao being a bit of a wild card. But now with all of this, he's sort of having these inner conflicts and all of that. Ling Yao is really exacerbating it and bringing it out of him, sort of awakening Greed. I really hope Greed turns a leaf and becomes a good character, but at the same point in time, I don't know how much agency Greed can truly have over himself considering he is one of Father's creations and ultimately is under Father's control. So I don't know, it's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be uh, really fun to see what direction they end up taking. I gotta stop saying the word interesting so much, but I gotta, I don't know. I gotta figure out a new word to say because I say it like at least five times an episode and I'm sorry. <laughs> I become hyper aware of uh, the words I say too much. Anyways, yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be really fun to see uh, what direction greed goes into next that's gonna be it for this episode thank you all so much for watching hope you enjoyed and i'll see you in the next one